All right, so the whole uh, idea here was that we are activating an extra feature on the device, on the app. It's acting, activating the ability to, to connect beyond. It's going to the email or Twitter, whatever. So that was one thing. Another thing now that we'll start to talk about is activating or using geolocation features, the ability for us to connect with the network and check GPS signals. Let's confirm something here first of all. Uh, again, most of these things beyond plain old HTML and Java, JavaScript, uh, are plugins. So to remind you, remind me, how is a way that you check a list of all of your plugins? Cordova plugin list. Yes, just a little backwards. Cordova. Let's try this. Go back to your app and do Cordova plugin list. That'll give you a list of your installed plugins. I believe we left the geolocation, in my case, I left the geolocation feature. If I didn't have that, then my geolocation stuff that we're about to do might not work. I left a list, I left, I gave a screenshot of, of what plugins I wanted in the network folder. I'll, I'll put another one with this latest version, and just a little difference is now it's also got the social sharing. And there could be more than one version of these apps. You can go off and download someone else's social app, and it might be better or worse than this one. I, I don't know. But you have to read what that one does. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this and leave it in the network folder. I guess that'll be like our last version of the, of the, of the plugin list. I'll put that in the network folder a little bit later. But anyway, we've got a list of our plugins. If you don't have the geolocation plugin, you'll have to do Cordova plugin add Cordova dash plugin dash geolocation. Don't do this if you see it in your list. This is a list of what's in my app, what's usable in my app. If you don't see geolocation, add it. The way geolocation will work is uh, we're going to connect over to Google Maps. We're going to connect to the Google Maps API, uh, API Application Programming Interface. This is a very common thing that a lot of websites do, a lot of big websites. Google Maps has an API, Twitter has an API, Facebook has an API, meaning a place or a way for us as a developer to connect to their services, their data what they allow us to do. So, just for your own info, if you search for Google Maps API, all of the deep documentation will be listed here. I guess the full address is developers.google.com slash maps. So I have a version that's already ready for us to start to use, but here is where you would go to learn all of the details on how do I add Google Maps to my to my project, simply displaying a map, or turn-by-turn -turn directions, or letting people add stuff to a map. You know, Google has given us the ability to use their maps. Not every single trade secret, but everything that, is, that they're allowing us is in here. Um, this is an example even Marvel Comics. Remember when we did the project a while ago about the, Mar about the hero database? Marvel has all of their database of 70 years of superheroes available for us to connect to <coughs> developer.marvel.com. And going there, and I read their documentation, I'll be able to, use, to figure out how to use their code to access information on any of the comics and characters in their database. Um, let me see a quick example. So they're going to give you the they're going to give you the code, the JavaScript code, how to access it, and then you have to figure out how to actually use it in your project. You know, they'll give you they'll give you example code. I want to I want to grab a list of comics. I want to access uh, uh, a character in a particular story. So the code will be listed there on how to use it, and then you apply it. 
what we're going to work with is the the Google the Google uh, the Google Maps. And the thing with any of these APIs from any of these companies, definitely you want to read the documentation because they're not all the same. Every company sets up a way for you to access their data in their way, but it's usually in the format of JSON. I'm looking at this one from Marvel. Getting a character story fetches a list of comic stories featuring a specific character with optional filters. The result and the data is going to be in JSON format. Code, colon, and then a code. Status, colon, and something. That's JSON format wrapped around curly braces. Data, colon, with results. JSON format we talked about. Google Maps, if we go off and read the documentation, will say the same sort of thing. So I'm just going to browse it very, very, very quickly, but then we'll do it. Oh, here's something. So there's an example code. Something quickly like this. We'll do this in a moment. We're going to create a new Google Map object, and we're going to have various JSON fields. Where do we center the map? Are we able to use scroll wheel? False. Zoom level. It's JSON format. And that's because we're going to have the ability to connect to the J to the Google JavaScript library, basically, on their server. We will not be able to download this one and have it as a part of our app. It has to be online. Therefore, we'll also have the ability to check, is the device online? If not, don't activate that feature. If the device is online, then activate the feature. So the way we'll do this is I have a starting point for us. If you go to the network folder, you'll see a new file called map.html. So go to the network folder and copy map.html <coughs> into your project's www folder. This is, this is already a somewhat complete example of the, of the geolocation, which then I'll explain what it does. But this is all based on the documentation at, the, at Google Maps, .api, whatever. And it's, it's put together in a way for us to start to use. It's a separate HTML file. We could integrate this directly into our rest of our code. I'm going to keep all of this separate in its own map file. That means we need to connect to it from our index file. So we'll find a place on our, on our project to have map. We'll click on that, and it'll open the map HTML. Uh, maybe it's getting a little cluttered in the, map, in the about screen. Let's add the map somewhere else, maybe in the, maybe just on, on where should we add it? Maybe on the home screen? The about section makes sense? Okay, we can keep going there. So in the about section, we'll add another button. We'll say get map or directions or something and then we will open this file. Okay, so we'll go back to our index file. Index.html. We've got a personalized button, contact this button, we need a new button. Let's make a new button called Directions. So I'm going to copy that paragraph again, paste it. This one's not going to be anything quite fancy. We just need to open up a new file, a new HTML file. So we don't even need an ID. We don't need J jQuery or JavaScript to work here. It's just going to open up a plain old file. Data icon will be navigation, 
there's a navigation icon that'll work. But the two big differences are we're not going to use JavaScript to open that to, to open something. We're opening a separate file. So href map.html. But because it's a separate file, all of this time we've been working in one file, index.html. But because now we're breaking out into a separate file, we have to have one more attribute rel external. If you go to an external file, from this file, add rel equals external attribute. We never had to do it before because we were within the confines of this index file, which is a few hundred lines long now. We could integrate what's in the map into what we have. I want to keep it separate. It's self-contained. The map container, HTML code, the JavaScript code, it's all self-contained in this one file. So I keep it as is. But we need the rel extra. Not data rel or anything, just rel. It's technically plain old HTML. So direction for the directors. Uh, directors, directions to the directors, yeah, directions. Okay, so what this does is it'll, it goes over to the map HTML. Let's open the map HTML file and see what I've given you. In the www folder of the project. Yeah. Okay, so if you then open the map file, it's an HTML5 file. It has some of the boilerplate stuff we've already seen. It's got a link to jQuery. We were expecting this. So it's going to look like the rest of our project, jQuery. Load custom CSS libraries here. So if I've got some custom CSS in my index file, I should put them here eventually. And we've got a body that starts up, not that, not that much. Uh, main content. There's a section, data roll page, ID map. So we've seen that before. It's got a unique ID. Header, data roll header. We've seen that before. Directions. Now there's something here. There is a there's an inline button. There's a button with inline JavaScript, which we usually want to avoid. But here is just a quick way to accomplish something. We are going from the index.html file to map.html, and we need a way to get back from the index H, from the map.html back to index. There's a JavaScript command history.go negative one. It goes back one point in history. We could do that much more complexly by doing, you know, on click, run a function with history.go, but here it is inline, which we usually want to avoid, but it does the job. That's all we need, not too complex. Notice the syntax. If you want to force JavaScript into HTML, there's a syntax. It's pretty, pretty unsightly, so we usually avoid it. And then it has a data roll button, data icon back, so a simple back button. This is go back. Directions, h1, an actual article like we've seen before, as always. Something slightly different here, a div, where we're creating it by calling the actual class, where we had something like data roll page that defines certain borders and margins and such. We can access those things always via class if we read the jQuery mobile documentation. I want to add the UI bar A, UI corner all, and UI shadow classes. So it makes this look in the style of a bar A. Remember, we redefined the color of A. It gives corners to all four corners, rounded corners to this element, and a drop shadow. A little bit of inline. A little bit of inline CSS, which again we want to avoid, but this will do the job. Some simple padding. 
and there's there's copious notes creates an element with rounded corners etc the map will display inside of map canvas so there's a div in a div the google map will actually appear here it's empty it has an id which usually we put the id as the last element and this has a basic style of a height how tall to make your map that could be percentages and so forth so the, a map will appear here eventually in this container there's a form uh, because the map will display but the whole point of this is that we're going to see uh, we're going to get driving directions a person's going to see a map that we create with whatever point and we're going to have driving directions to the campus so this is in a form uh, let's see form map destination display none okay line 31 would be the line that you might want to change to change your ending destination this will uh, this will give us turn-by-turn -turn directions to some ending destination we can set any ending address there any valid address and then the map will give you turn-by-turn -turn directions to where you want to go it's set to style display none if you set it to style display block the person will be able to choose the ending destination which doesn't make sense why would they change my map this is the map to take you to San Diego continuing education why would I let them put their own ending destination I want it always to give you a map to come here but we need it in order for the JavaScript to create a map so it's hidden then there is a button that will say get directions click the button to check the coordinates of where the person currently is and give me a map to this campus 8355 Arrow Drive and then turn by turn directions will be displayed in another div which is currently, dis currently display none, hidden eventually once the person clicks it will show the div turn by turn directions so that's the main body it's or the main section it's not a lot what what is the complex part is all of this JavaScript there's a reference to jQuery on the server this version of this map requires this version of jQuery we're using some other version 2 dot something we want to leave that one as is for the moment we have the jQuery mobile JS so that jQuery mobile works then we've got the we've got the Google Maps JavaScript file um, online because we cannot download it it has to be online a bunch of JavaScript happens I'll come back to that in a moment at the very end I already have there the Cordova JS file and any other JS library should go here such as our custom index.js this example is something that I put together from an article at Stack Overflow. If you haven't heard of stackoverflow.com, it's a great website where people ask questions on like every programming language and people usually have an answer on every programming language. If you follow that link, if you double click it, or if you open it in your browser, copy and paste, you can go to see the example there's an example that someone gave of how to create a Google map in JavaScript someone put the code so how many of you raise your hands have heard of Stack Overflow before not enough people you all need to know about this now because when this class ends unless you take this class again I'm not going to be there to help you but Stack Overflow is a place where people are asking questions and people are answering questions. Well, if anyone can answer the question, that means anyone can give a crazy answer. Well, the reason that you get good results here is because people vote. 
on the answer. Other people see the answer and they say, that does work. I tried it and it worked. Thumbs up. And the bad answers are going to get voted down. And the good answers are going to rise up, in theory. So this one's got 40 positive thumbs up, so that's the highest one. If I scroll down, other people give their opinions and they might not be as well regarded. And this person gave like three different versions of the code. You'll also see what I really like is related examples. How did a single mouse scroll wheel when scaling on Google Maps? 486 answers. So people are giving answers to related things. No answers there yet. Geolocation is possible but inaccurate. So I like reading the related questions and answers too. I, I learn even more. Google Maps displaying incorrectly in jQuery Mobile. We're using jQuery Mobile. We might have an error. I might want to read that. Most likely this is going to be the thing about the API key. Uh, data role. Oh, someone said, so you had two data roles page. So Stack Overflow is a global community of question and questions and answers. It's been very useful for me throughout the years. I look like I have every answer, but if I don't have an answer, I look it up, and I often get the answer from here. So this example that I've given you of this map is something that I put together uh, when I was putting together an activity to be able to do a map. I went up and looked up some answers, and I looked at the Google documentation, and I put something together. It's very well commented. I don't have to explain every single line. But in general, we need to create variables to store various map elements. We have a basic starting point. If the GPS signal on the device doesn't work, it will default to these coordinates. These coordinates are obviously the San Diego Convention Center. You can change those to whatever you want. But if the map doesn't work, give us some starting point in San Diego for someone to get some kind of a map to get to here. Hopefully it does work that it got a map. The way it tries to get a map is actually line 52. Navigator dot geolocation dot get current position. So that's via the HTML5 and Cordova system. Get our current position based on the GPS chip of the device. That has either a LOC, location success, or location error. These can be called anything you want. These are callback functions. Oh, look at that. The callback function is defined right there. Location success, location error. So document on load. We've never seen this one before. But this is the same thing. To the document, to the whole page itself, upon load, specifically the map ID, the container of the map. When the map container loads, check the GPS coordinates. If we have a location success, run an initialization function based on the position object that we got from the GPS chip. The position object includes coordinates of latitude and longitude and altitude and other things. To know how that works, we can, you know, you can go off and look up uh, get current position. You'll find plenty of documentation out there. Here's one from, from Mozilla, which are technically the inventors of JavaScript. You can go over here and you'll see, okay, how does navigator.geolocation work? What are the possibilities? Lots of specifications and all of that info, examples. But this position object also, if your device is capable, stores altitude and velocity things that you can then use. So there's an initialization function, which is defined here. I'll get to that in a moment. There could have been a loc error, location error. Okay, function loc error takes the error callback object, initialize ourselves what's basic lat and basic long. Right here, basic lat, basic long the coordinates to the San Diego Convention Center. If there was an error attempting to get the location, initialize our map 
to the convention center. And then also in the console will give us some output. If it didn't, if you, if either way, if we did get a successful result, for example, initialize. Well, initialize is made up of latitude and longitude. And again, I don't have to re read every single one of these. Read the comments. But this is then using Google's code to create a new Google map and initializing ourselves map with a zoom level. How many zoom levels are there? Well, I would read the documentation and it would tell me there's 20. Put the right one that I want. I would center the, the map. What kind of map do I want to show? Right now I'm going to show a road map. How many more are there? I go read the documentation, and there's others like elevation or topography or whatever. Roadmap. I set my map, and the the marker, the little pin that appears on the map. Set the pin's position on the map, and put some text. Here's where you are. I can change that. I can make a little change right there for it to say something else. There's also an info window. If you click on your pin, we get a pop-up that says your current position is latitude and longitude. That can be changed in those quotes. Most of the things here you don't really need to change, but based on the comments that I've written and you know the logic behind it, you can figure out some things to change. There's calculate route. Calculate route comes from, so what I just said is about just showing a map of where the person is. Below the map, we saw that there was a button, button directions. On click of the button directions, we're on the calculate route function, which is what's coming up right here. Various things need to be set up. Map destination val map destination is that input field where we have predefined the address to this campus. So if you change that to your home address, when you click the calculate, when you click the get directions button, it will make a calculation of where your current location is, your destination location, It'll connect to the Google server and make a map. So if there is a current position and the current position is not empty, and there's a target destination and the target destination is not empty, let's create a request. Let's ask Google. Starting point, ending point, travel mode by driving. Put bicycle, we can put bus, we can put ferry. Let's make a request to make a map. That then continues. Okay, let's chart a route based on our request, which will have a response or status. This should be, you know, uh, fail success, I guess. If there is a status of okay, Google found a path, and then it's starting to display this on screen. There's an optional there of actual turn by turns that will pop up to display turn left, turn right, turn left, turn right. It's commented out for the moment. It will then show the results div. We had a couple of things that were hidden. A div results display none. We have no results to display. It's hidden. If it tries to calculate and finds a path, it will then show the result, or else there was no, there was no path, no GPS. Else, keep it hidden. That's related to that. So yes, the the GPS map thing. I'm giving it to you. It's rather complete, but you still kind of have to understand how it's work, how it works, if you want to change it. The example came from looking it up online and putting something together. And we connected the index to this map. Let's run it um, in Cordova in the command prompt on a device 
or emulator and see what we get. Most likely there will be a little issue, which we will see what it is. But I'm going to run it on my device first. I'm also going to run it in the browser just to see it in a different way. Okay, here it is. So it's coming, it's loading on my device. Okay, so it's on my device. I go over to the about. I have a brand new directions with my new nav icon. Click on that. It opens up the, the other screen. Uh, it's still the plain basic gray uh, because I never attached the other CSS libraries or JavaScript libraries. That's normal. The map is not quite loading up. I'll explain why. I'm also loading it here on the browser. I'm going to open it in the browser in the console here. I'm then going to click on that icon. I'm going to scroll down to directions. A new screen loads up. Just ignore that for a moment. Last screen is going to go away in a moment. And the direction screen again. It's plain and gray because I never added my custom style. Maps not loading up yet. And this is get directions. Message over here Google Maps API warning. No API key. Very recently, Google changed things. You used to be able to access a Google Map for free. You could connect to the Google Maps and make up any map and do what we wanted to. And since I've been teaching this class a while, it's always worked. Very recently, they changed this so that now you need an API key. How do I get an API key? There's a link there. So we're not going to go through the whole process, but you would need to go through the process if you wanted this to work. What's going to happen here is it says, you're trying to use Google Maps you need to get an API key. And it is still going to be free if you're not doing like 10,000 connections to the map. Once you do a lot of connections, then you have to pay Google. But for our you know, smaller kinds of apps, we should be OK. So if you, if you follow that link, uh, eventually it takes you to the Google Maps, obtaining an API key. And the process will be here. You have to sign in with a Gmail account. You have to request the key for free. And then, when they give you the key, you're going to edit the code a little bit. We had the code that said JavaScript maps.googleapi.com slash maps, blah, blah, blah. We're going to add key equals your unique API. I can't give you an API here. I have to make one for myself, and then it's for myself. But reading the documentation here, eventually when I get my key, we need to change this line right here. Google Maps slash whatever, semicolon, key equals whatever your key is. And then it'll say, okay, you're a real developer, we'll let you use our maps, the map will load up. Right now it's not loading up because we don't have the key. Yes? You don't want to share the key. You don't want to share the key because then uh, someone else is using your credentials. Used in what? You you can use the same API key on different apps. Yes. So that's a little annoying. Uh, I, I've given you a file that works up until recently because Google changed their system and now it needs a unique key. So if you're not getting the map, that's normal. I'm not getting it either. But the answer is you miss, you're miss you missing a key. So if you do a search, how to get a Google Maps API key, 
you get to the screens that I'm showing. Look at that, an answer from Stack Overflow. That'll lead you back anyway to the official Google documentation. To fully get this map working, you need this API key. The reason I'm leaving it at this point is, depending on the kind of app you're trying to create, of course, you may need a map or not. You may need these steps or not. This app that we're testing together and working on, and if you manage to upload something to Amazon and haven't submitted it, if you want this extra feature, you need to get it to work before you, you submit it to your app store. Because someone's going to download your app, and they say the map doesn't work. They're going to give you one star. So you want to make sure it all works. You have to go through the process of then getting the key. That's something that you can do on your own. You should see an error, not, not really an error, a warning, but that's an error. A warning should be telling you you're missing the API. And there's the link going directly to... I'm going to put that link in my network folder also if people want the direct link. But the, the, the answers are there. So in the network folder, I'm going to say uh, map how to get a key, an API key. And then the link is going to go directly to the Google screen. It's very straightforward. You need a Google account. You already have a Google account if you've got a Gmail. Then you follow their steps. They'll give you a secret code that's only for you. And then you apply that secret code into the code. What's that? Let me show you that again. The line is right here. Um, line 42. The line that says, let's use Google Maps. At the end of there. So in the example from Google, it says once you get it says here. So once you it says step one get a key. So we follow the steps. Then step two, then to actually use it, where you have your script that points to the Google Maps, we then need to add one more item. Key equals your key. So what it would fuller be actually is and, because we have <coughs> The attribute key equals your key and any other attributes like call back to initialize, not necessary. Um, so you leave the V or the value? Yeah. I believe that's V for version, version of the Google map. Key equals your key. The example on the Google also then says and init initialize equals something. You don't need that one because you've got initialization happening down here. So that's how then to complete this. And ampersand key equals your key. Yes? We don't need that. Um, all the script that we're using is JavaScript, but they're being super specific and saying if you're using this, it's technically JavaScript. So we don't need that part. Now, I do see it's also slightly different at the beginning here. It also says async and defer. This is a newer way that probably would be okay to add. This is a newer way to load up our JavaScript. Deferred loading and asynchronous. Um, I'm going to say, yeah, that might be a good idea to add. So script async defer. What's happening there is that Usually, when we load JavaScript, everything stops. We get to this point, load that. Then we proceed. Then we proceed. If we add asynchronous and defer, we're deferring when this will load up until some time later. And asynchronous is, let this load in the background while other stuff happens. So it might even be useful to put it up on this first one 
not on our local one, really, because it's local. It loads up at the time that our app loads up. But these are loading up from a server. So defer when it loads asynchronous. Uh, I'm still not quite sold on defer because if our app relies on these things, there will be a moment where the app will look weird while it loads. So I don't know why we want to defer loading. Maybe just async is good, but you know Google's example was that, so I probably wouldn't change it. That would make sense to me. Load up that JavaScript asynchronously, or, or maybe it, or it's smart enough, the browsers nowadays are smart enough to do them both. Maybe. Maybe it is in order. Start loading it asynchronously, but defer it. I don't know. So, this is the map. For it to fully work, you need the key. You can get the key on that website. I put the link on the, on the network folder. And then you add it to the end of your code. And key equals one. It might be cool if you try it. We're getting close to the end of the day. But if you try it and see if it works, it should work. But to confirm that it fully works, you need to do that. I could give you a key, of course, but that would be my key. You need your key. So we'll end the main lecture in a moment, but what we added today was social sharing ability, email sending ability, a map, which needs still a little bit more setup if you want it to fully work. And um, here's something fun, actually. Um, <clears throat> you can maybe borrow someone else's key because people upload their code on GitHub and sometimes forget they have sensitive information there. So maybe if you search GitHub for examples, code examples of Google APIs, I might have to be signed in to get the results. Example code in a moment, but I'm just curious here. What if someone <clears throat> so I searched on GitHub the line of code from the Google <coughs> example 133,000 results. I'm just kind of trolling around if I find anyone's key to borrow, I could use their key. See, is there any JavaScript versions? Insert your own key. Yeah, that might be someone's key right there. A gold iron hack, you just got hacked. Okay, so that looks like the real key. I'm going to borrow it. Maybe, but let's see what happens. I maybe shouldn't be recording this, but uh, let's see what happens. So I'm going to borrow someone's key. Uh, I don't want to blame the victim, but you shouldn't have put your keys up on a public repository. No, mm -hmm. Let's see what happens here. So my app is loading. Let me also open my console just to see something. All right, so let's 
see, I'm going to go over to the About screen. Please stop the fucking monitor. 